Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and today I'm excited to be returning to the Agilian Vance Design Blog to help celebrate the company's 10th anniversary. My video features some of the newest goodies which were released last week, and I'm specifically focusing on this new signature polka dot cover plate. This cover plate is covered in small dots in a classic pattern. It's a great basic for any craft room that can be used all year round. It's slightly smaller than an A2 card front at 4 by 5 and a quarter inches, and it has Jillian's signature stitch dot pattern around the edges, so it'll work perfectly with many of the dies that have already been released. This is my first time using this plate, and I want to see how easy it is to work with. I'll put it in my Gemini Junior sandwich and run it through my machine. I'm using the metal shim because there are tons of these dots, and I want them to cut completely and fall out easily. And they do. Look at that. The die cut came out completely clean. Now let's check the die. Okay, there's quite a few dots left in. Let's see how easily they fall out. Not bad. Now because I'm on my desk here, I'm not really able to give it a real whack, and I ended up using a craft pick to poke some of them out. But later, when I whacked it a few times against my recycling bin, they all came out without using the craft pick. I'm going to keep these dots for use later on, so I've put them in a little container on my desk. Now let's make a card. I started by covering a panel of white cardstock with red ink. This will go behind my white die cut panel. I've set it aside to dry a bit, and I'll work on some of the other elements for the card front. This is the new Delightful Daisy Junior set, and it has the most adorable ladybug. I cut the body from black cardstock and the wings from cardstock that I had inked with the same red as the background. You can see how easily they go together. Do you say ladybug or ladybird? I think it may be a UK thing. My in-laws call them ladybirds, which I think is a much prettier name. And here's the new spring birdie set. I'm going to use the two little sprigs of leaves. Well, I ended up only using one, but I made two from white cardstock I had inked with green ink. To assemble the card, I first trimmed the red panel with the largest stitch dot rectangle die. This will fit exactly behind the polka dot panel. Then I put tiny dots of Just Glue It liquid glue on the back of the polka dot die cut. I put them between every cutout dot around the edges, and then strategically around the center areas, not between every cutout. And because I didn't want any glue seeping out from behind the polka dot layer, I pressed the panel down onto a piece of scrap paper before using my score buddy to help me get the two panels placed exactly together. I put a large acrylic block over top while the glue sets. Remember my little container of dots? I'm going slow-mo here for a minute while I show you what happened. I opened my misty door and whoosh! Dots everywhere! Please tell me I'm not the only one things like this happen to. Now back to our regular programming. I used one of the thank you sentiments from the new thank you 6x8 set. It has a great mix of basic sentiments for thank you cards. I simply stamped it in black onto a die cut from the sentiment strip set. I used my misty in case I needed to restamp, but I didn't. And here's how I'll put the card together. I actually ended up using the other green branch because I couldn't get this one placed exactly right. And I popped up the ladybug with foam tape. I love the play between the dotted background and the dots on her wings. And that pop of green is the perfect contrast. Okay, moving to card number two. I started out the same way, this time with a yellow background trimmed with the largest stitched rectangle dot die and another white panel cut with the cover plate. I'm using the same thank you stamp set for the sentiment, but this time with a different stamp. I won't put you through the pain of the actual assembly, but here's my plan. I've cut that delightful daisy from white cardstock, and then for the center I inked some cardstock with the same yellow ink, and then cut it with the cover plate, and then with the circle die. I'm layering that up over a plain white circle, so now the pattern is reversed, white dots on a yellow background. I'll trim the sentiment strip down, and I'll pop it up just below the daisy. I love how that reversed flower center just adds a bit of interest, and shows that you don't have to use the whole cover plate every time. For the next card, I've already stamped the largest thank you with red and pink inks. I'm going to use the cover plate and a Copic multi-liner to add some subtle dots to my background. There are a few options here. I chose to just do a few rows above and below the sentiment, but you could cover the whole panel, or you could use different color markers. For this one, I used a 0.7, which is quite a wide tip. 
I don't think I would try this with Copics because I don't want to get the alcohol ink on the cover plate itself. I'm just not sure how it might interact with future cuts, and I am sure that I don't want to try and clean it out of each little dot. But you can experiment and get different looks with different mediums. Of course, you could use a die cut as your stencil, and then you could use whichever markers you want and not worry about getting ink on it. My pattern is a bit whimsical because, of course, my pen didn't land in the exact center every time, but the pattern is regular enough and just a subtle addition to my card front. Another way you could do it is to draw the outlines of each dot. Let me show you. First, I changed my marker for an 0.3, which is thinner and will give a smaller outline. You could color these in with colors, or you could even just use the multiliner to color them in. There's lots of options for this method that can result in very different looks. I just added some jewels for sparkle, and this card is done. For my next card, well, two really, I had this one cover plate die cut that didn't get cut exactly properly, so I'll use it as a stencil and blend ink through it. I taped the two panels down and I used my dome ink blenders and a rainbow of inks over top. I'll speed through this since that's not really why we're here, and of course you can get a different look by just changing your color palette. And when I'm done, I've got two panels I can use on cards. I trimmed down the darker one because of the tape marks, but then I had an idea for the white one. I had to cut another panel, which I wouldn't have had to do if I hadn't already trimmed the first one. Anyway, I lined it up so that the stencil is shifted to allow me to blend ink through it and double up the dots. I used the same colors in almost the same locations, but of course I couldn't see where everything was and I ended up kind of mixing things up. The result on the panel is really cool, with dots of different colors kind of mixed in in the middle. As I'm saying this, it doesn't make a lot of sense, so I hope you can see it in the result. And of course I have another dark panel that I can now use on a future project. This time I used a narrow sentiment strip die and a long border thank you from the same thank you set. See what I mean about there being so many options? After I stamped it, I added a black sentiment strip cut from the next biggest die to add a nice border. I also used a flower from the Spring Birdie set and I put a big pink jewel in the center. Here's a close-up. I hope you can see what I mean about those dots intermingling and creating even more interest. For my next card, I'm changing up my sentiment game and using a black strip with some white embossing. This sentiment is quite a bit bigger and I'm using the widest sentiment strip in that set. I prepped the cardstock with an anti-static pouch and then stamped it with WOW embossing ink and used opaque bright white powder. Okay, now I need your input. I had a hard time deciding between a black background or white. It's funny that while I was sitting at my desk filming, it seemed to me very clear that I preferred the white. But now that I'm looking at the video, I think the black would have been a really good option too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. When I adhered it to the card base, I only put glue down behind the sentiment, so the edges of the panel are kind of rough and raw and curving up a bit. I think it's a fun look that is consistent with the graphic feel of this card. Notice I also ended up using the white panel and a black card base, so I got the best of both worlds. For my last card, I did some prep before I started filming. These are little groups of those dots. They're temporarily attached to my paper here so that I can color them with a rainbow of Copics. I won't torture you with all the coloring, but I'm going to inlay them into the dot panel. You could take this as far as you want, right up to filling in every hole, but I'm just going to make it more random to give the look of confetti. I've prepped the card and sentiment as well. White die cut on a white card base, and I'll just use a jewel picker and the Just Glue It to pop the dots into random spaces. I did try to ensure a fairly even spread of color and spacing. And when I thought I was finished, I placed the sentiment down and I used up the last few dots to fill in any bald patches. There's no point having any leftovers. Then I used foam tape to pop up the last sentiment, and that's my final card finished. Here's a quick look at all six of them. I think they really show what a useful tool this cover plate is. So many different ways to use it and different looks you can get from this classic pattern. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to head to Jillian's blogs for details of a daily giveaway and free shipping for a limited time. Supplies are listed below in the description and also over on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.